Angela Graves Williams. Williams Graves. <laughs> anyway. Um, and then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this meeting and the opportunity to serve. Bless all who have assembled here and help us to do the job of public service in a manner that is pleasing to you. These and all other blessings we ask in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thanks very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Ms. Graves? Here. Ms. Johnson? Here. Mr. Brutagero? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Whitley? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Brutagero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Dr. Whitley? Mr. Wynn? It's the aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The clerk will please read the resolution for the closed meeting. A resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have you here. I want to apologize for being a couple of minutes late. We were hearing from our chief of police, and, and in fact, we ran, we ran late. We're, we apologize for that. Um, for those of you who do not regularly attend our council sessions, the process we will follow is the first thing we're going to do is take up the public hearings. We have a num number of them on tonight's agenda. At the conclusion of the public hearings, uh, we'll move directly to the regular agenda. And then I think we have one or two... Uh, add-ons there at the very end for some of them for I think one maybe for an appointment. Yes, sir. The, the conclusion of the regular agenda, and by the way, we'll vote on all these matters in just the way they are numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of the agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the city council on a non-agenda item, that's a new business item, you'll be given that opportunity. In order to have your name called, though, you must have first signed uh, a slip of paper which the clerk has made available in the lobby behind the council chambers before the meeting began. So and four or five of you have elected to do that. So there are no ceremonial matters. So we'll move directly then to public hearing number one. Public hearing one scheduled for this day uh, on the application of John Rizzo for a change of zoning from R8 single family to conditional R9 single family at 1345 Melrose Parkway by 6-0 vote planning commission recommends approval. Mr. Rizzo, <coughs> John Rizzo. Okay. Um, Mr. Rizzo, if you'll give us your full name and your present ad it's home address, and then please just limit your remarks to three minutes. John Rizzo, uh, 6239 Palatine Avenue in Norfolk. I'm excited about this application uh, for a number of reasons. One, it enables me to save a lot of money. As I sell my home at 6239 Palatine Avenue and move to 1345 Melrose Parkway, I'm going to pick up 5000 in flood insurance and lawn maintenance, an additional $1.3,000 in property taxes, and 9000 in taking care of my parents. The additional home gives me an opportunity to expand my art studio and gives me uh, an opportunity to put my teenage boys in that home. Those are my, yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, may I make another comment? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm considered a turnaround specialist. And um, when I do this, when I invest this money in this street, I'm going to look for the city for some help in improving the street. And I gave a list of uh, what I would be asking for in the planning commission meeting. And if anybody would like to hear that, I would repeat it. Any objections? No, um, no you have three minutes. Okay. You can use them any you like. So what I, what I like to say, I, I love Melrose Parkway. It's a wonderful street. I walk it every day. I like to be near campus. It keeps me close to work. Um, what I like to see is improved street lighting. I like to see a reduction in number of trees for better sight lines. I like to see better city maintenance. I like to see a re weekly recycle day. I like a neighborhood quality official that uh, develops and enforces deficiency lists. I like to reach out to owners of tired properties while for low interest improvement loans or grants to underwater elderly property owners. 
City to buy underwater properties as HELOCs reset, institute a pride of ownership campaign, how to maintain a property pamphlet to student renters, clearly identified parking spaces, better themed signage, purchase a home for a police officer and make night walks mandatory, repair the damaged sidewalks and add where missing, allow new housing that conforms to the neighborhood's character regardless of the size of the lot, hire a talented local landscape firm to help future uh, improvements, add speed bumps and define pedestrian crossings, benches, and examine each application for appropriateness and civic league support. Identify nine uh, non-ownership properties and start a dialogue. That's how I see the that street improved. Instead of complaining about it, I'd like to see improvements on it, and that's what I'm hoping. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Dispense with the charter. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves. No. Ms. Johnson. No. Mr. Pertigiri. No. Mr. Riddick. No. Mr. Smigel. No. Dr. Wibley? No. Mr. Wynn? No. Mr. Frame? No. Thank you. Motion fails. Public hearing two, please. Public hearing two scheduled for this day on the application of DT Builders LLC for a change of zoning from R8 single family to conditional R9 single family on property located at 1510 Cullen <coughs> Avenue and by a 5 1 vote, Planning Commission recommends denial. All right, we have a number of folks who have signed up to speak. When I call your name, <coughs> I haven't called your name yet, okay. Um, um, all I ask, please, is that you come forward, identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name and your present home address, and then please, your, please limit your remarks to three minutes. Pauline Wilson. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Pauline Wilson. My mother's at 1520 Colon Avenue. And we live next door to 1510, where the guy's gonna rebuild it, another house. And he's done a lot of good work in that neighborhood. He has changed it tremendously. And I would like to see another house there. Great. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for coming down. All right. Appreciate it. LaShawn Robinson. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here on behalf of the subdivision for 1510 Colon Avenue. In your name and address, please, for the record. Um, my name and address is 1617 Canoga Street, Norfolk, Virginia. My name is LaShawn Robinson. Thank you. I'm here on the request on the behalf of 1510 Subdivision. Um, I would like to give you guys the work that I've done here in the Campostella area. And as far as having the subdivision for 1510, I have the individuals next door that's approval, and I have some one else that's also that I've sold homes to on a narrow lot that's smaller than 1510. Um, I would like to show you guys the homes that I've built there in the Campostella area. And every home that I've built in the Campostella area is next to homes that's condemned, need rehabbing, need work done to it. And on this particular street, We've done seven homes so far. It's been rezoned thus far, and we would like for the board to consider 1510 be rezoned. And I would like to present sure. our work. Sure, give it to the clerk, and he'll, he'll pass it around. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Appreciate that. Janice McKee. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Fram, Vice Mayor, and my Councilman Riddick, and all the other council persons that are sitting before us this evening. My name is Janice McKee. My address is 903 Haddon Street, 
Norfolk, Virginia, 23523, and I'm the president of the Campus Ella Civic League. I am here uh, on behalf of the league. Um, Mr. Robinson does build nice houses. He has built nice houses in Campostella. But this particular lot was a, fi was a single family dwelling lot, which he d subdivided, as a, and he did it before the rezoning request had gone in. There's a, there's a, a couple of pieces missing. Um, we, only, we just went to the rezoning for it. Um, And it was brought to my attention that it was done. And I took it to the Civic League, which I had become the president of. And uh, with an anonymous vote, uh, everybody <coughs> said no. And the reasoning for it was because the other houses in which he built, they're large size houses. These are very narrow size houses. His large houses sell. It would have been very nice because those other houses down the street that he's built are nice, large size houses. We could put a family with three or four children in there. We could put a they could put a family with six children in there. That little narrow, that little narrow place. Mm -mm. And he built it before we could come before council and before planning <coughs> to tell you that he had subdivided it, along with the fact that we had not had the rezoning done yet. And so, so construction has started. He has started. It was finished. On both houses? Just one of them. Oh, and it, w it would have been both of them if it hadn't been brought to our attention wow. from planning. How did that happen? Oh. Excuse me, I don't understand. He got a building permit. Yeah, how did that happen? George, can you <laughs> explain this? He had a building permit on a improperly zoned lot? <laughs> the, uh, the piece of property um, Thank you. W is entitled um, to um, build a single house and um, the building permit was pulled as, as is allowed and um, the gentleman built the house to the far side of the lot in anticipation of being able to then subsequently subdivide the lot and create a second lot on which to build a second house. He's on one lot. He's, he's on one, you have one lot there, the request for this rezoning would allow the second lot. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. McKay. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, Matt Fran. Thank you. Don't need to say anything else. Yes, ma'am. Shawana, is it Revel? Reveal? I'm sorry. Good evening. Good evening, evening Council. Hey, my name is Shawana Revel. I went through a first time home buyers program, which allowed me and my family to get our home built from the ground. We was blessed to meet someone like Mr. Robinson. He built us a home on a narrow lot. Um, I have 2,300 square feet, and I have a narrow home, and it fits us just fine. And he may have not asked for permission. He may have did it the right way, but he does a lot for the community, and I'm so appreciative of him, me and my family. All right, thank you for coming down. Appreciate it. James Allen. Good evening, my name is James Allen and my address is 1121 Campus Della Road. I come and stand before you as the realtor who represents Mr. John Robinson in the sale of his properties that he's done in the Campus Della area. Uh, he also works with another builder that I work with as well. And over the last three years, we have built a total of nine homes, all of which would have been on the sub resub rezone resubdivided lots. Uh, all of the houses that Mr. Robson builds are 2,000 square feet and above. The particular property that you're talking about now is a four-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath home. has over 2,000 square feet in it. It is not a narrow house. It may look narrow, but it is a big house, and it is a very well-built, well-designed property. I stand asking you all to go ahead and give him the subdivision so that he can put the second house on there. We are constantly taking old, dilapidated, blighted properties, tearing them down, and building new homes, building a new residence, new revenues for the city as well. Out of the nine homes that we've done over the last three years, we have five military families who have moved into the Campus Teller area. We have a police officer who lives on Selden Avenue in one of the homes. We have a retired military person. We have school teachers. 
we are, we are changing the complexion of that community, and that's what Mr. Robson is trying to do here. So I would ask the council, if you would, to please approve his petition to subdivide this lot so he could build a second home on the lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Greg, I'm sorry. Roscoe Calloway. Good afternoon, Council, Mayor, and City Managers, my friends and all. Uh, my name is Roscoe Calloway. I'm with the Campus Della Civic Lead, former president of the Campus Della Civic Lead um, at 1121 Campus Della Road. I'm here for the project. I have bought with me while I talk, because I don't want to talk without y'all looking at these. I bought some pictures of the Campus Della Northfoot area. And I wanted to explain to you, of course, I've been in this area since 1976. I formerly met here when Vice Mayor Green was here, talked a little bit with him on occasionally. Superintendent was Dr. Simpkins, who I spoke a little bit on our educational program. And also remember down at Church Creek, they had the issue about the Warden Church Creek, and the people came out in droves about Church Creek, said they didn't want to Warden Church Creek because it was running the business away. And there were trees and things, and then they went to trees in the middle of the street and all of that. And so the city decided to go ahead and let the State Department take over Church Creek and renovate Church Creek and change up some zoning there to match it. And then there was the issue about the stadium. I remember Mr. Herb Collin, councilman, fussing about the stadium that we didn't need a tied stadium and got Zinia the signatures to change that, but we ended up with a stadium. I remember the company that came down about Tywater Drive and said there was too many houses they was going to put there on the apartments, and the whole community came down and said, we didn't want the apartments there on Tywater Drive down there next to below the bridge because there's going to be too much traffic next to the senior home, but it was approved. I remember them talking about the fact that they didn't want the light rail, and it was costing the taxpayer too much money, but the light rail was approved. And what I've got there before you, pictures of the south side. And I came here in 1976 working on the job out at Naval Base. And I stayed here for a little while. Then I came back in 1980. I love Campus Stella, and I wanted to apologize for anything that TD Builders might have done. I have put together with my effort a south side community to rebuild Campus Stella in Arizona south side. I can no longer sit back and allow Campus Stella to be a blighted area, which it will constantly be, as we don't tend to want to do something to fix it up. And what we are doing, we have new schools coming in there, and we have people wanting to come in the area. And we are not doing anything that's out of focus of what the community need to be developed. When I sit down on occasion and talk to Isola Wayne, who passed over at the church, I remember many conversations with him and many conversations with Dr. Manley about what do we do about our neighborhood. And Campus Stella is a dominant black neighborhood, and it dominantly needs to be brought up to part. We've got a situation where they're saying on the news, Norfolk is undeveloped. Undeveloped, why? Because we're constantly in battle with one another. I'm about sitting down at the table and come to some fair solution. I apologize for TD Builder, but I also say we would like to have that lot separated that we can bring more tax revenues into the area. And I'll pass you those pictures where you can see what Wilson Road and I try to identify the different areas and down through Colon Avenue where you can actually look and see. And I know planning have said no, but at the same fact, planning is not what they've done in Huntersville. Thank I really looked at it. Thanks, Mr. Kelly. Thank you. Quick Any question? questions? Uh, well, maybe of George. George, on the the and, previous uh, Roscoe, thank you very much. Uh, Appreciate the previous houses that are have been subdivided. Um, did the Civic League at that time vote in favor of subdividing those? Do you recall? Um, our understanding is, and Mr. Calloway was representing the Civic League at the time and he purported that the Civic League had voted in favor of it. Did, so, yeah. did the planning department, did the planning department re recommend denial of those at the time as well? Uh, I believe we did. I think we've been pretty consistent on this. Did one. the planning commission recommend denial of it at that time? I believe several of them, the planning commission did recommend denial. When it came before council, did we vote in favor of it and overturn? My recollection is that that may have happened, okay. yes, sir. George, the two houses that, I guess he built the two that are closest to Wilson Road, is that right? Yes. What size lots are they on? I, I don't know, sir. 
on your I could find it out and get back to you, but I, I, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. We, we need to can we? Wait, wait, go, go ahead, George. What? What, what are you, George? We're talking to you, George. What oh, on yeah, no, I say? I guess the builder is back. I, what size are the two that are? You built the two closest here. to Wilson Road. The realtor. He's, he's the, re the he's, realtor. He's the realtor. Oh, the builders yeah. over. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, builders here as well. But you're asking what size are the homes or what size? Are the what homes? size are the lots? I believe those lots ended up 45 by 100. Mm -hmm. 45 by 100. Can we say no? These are 35. That's These are 35. Um, I think according to the 45. These are the yeah. same size yeah. lots yeah. as those are. Yes, sir. That's what you're. Okay, thank you. Uh, All right, Mayor. Yes, Mayor. Um, is there clarity that the Civic League voted for the previous houses? Yes, for him to build. Yes. On the thirty-five. Forty-five. Yeah, I think Miss. Uh, Miss uh, Civic League President. Can you? Okay. I mean, this is. Um, well, what, well, let's let them come up to the microphone yeah. that are shouting out. You know. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Yeah. Prior to prior to this point, Mr. Calloway signed off on things. Everything was not brought to the body. Okay. So, I, and I don't like to throw people under the bus. I don't like that. <laughs> I, I don't. It happens. But I just can't. Time. I can't. <laughs> I don't know why not. I'm struggling with this, Tommy. <laughs> Even and I need to tell you this: the, there was a signature on the request for the rezoning that was Mr. Calloway, and he had already resigned from being the president, so therefore he shouldn't even have had a signature on that. But this is different because this is going from R8 to R9, and R9 is for lots that are 40 feet or less. So it has to be 35 or 40 feet. Yeah. This isn't a 45-foot lot. Right. Unless I'm missing something. It says in the document that R9 is for 40 feet or less. So yep. in, unless... It's, it's 40 or larger. Yeah. That's right. You couldn't have it less. You could have it less. <laughs> you like a little skinny. Okay. So is any other questions? I have yes. a question. We ready? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Is the issue? Help me to understand. Okay. With regard to the last houses that were built, were those houses and those plans brought to the Civic League? No, they were not. But what he did do was the houses that were the houses were that are abolished. Mm -hmm. The size of the houses that he put back mm -hmm. are the size of the houses that he tore down. Okay. Therefore, so he did not. Therefore, he didn't have to he, come to the council. He didn't have exactly. to come to. So it was a tear down and a rebuild. One was an empty lot. Okay. And then there was a, a, a house, a big house. Now, and that's what's happened with a lot of the lots that he's built. That the space, the footage was what was. He literally, he literally built houses that were nice. Big house. Big house. I've seen them. Yeah. Yeah, I've you, yeah. I've, I've shown and some. On, and on Colin Avenue, when it gets down to that particular space down there, mm -hmm. that he was trying to do, he, he, he did a double for you. He did a double dip on that on that particular one. But the first two on Colin, they are right. nice and I remember those. Sold. Exactly. Now, if he had to put one of those down there, okay. it wouldn't have been a problem. Okay. 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 So yeah. we're ready, Mr. Riddick. Do you want to? Yeah. Um, they they have built some houses that you know <coughs> houses in the past, and and we can't deny that. But on this particular issue, uh, I think it would be uh, a disservice to that particular block of Colin Avenue to try to squeeze a another house you know up there. Uh, I'm opposed to it. And uh, a lot of times when these builders go in and they try to get a lot of houses in a small space. They changed the character of the streets and of the neighborhoods, and this would really change the character of this particular street and of this neighborhood as well. We had one like this before, but the Civic League didn't oppose it. Right. And the builder had started to yeah. build, and, and it was enough space for the subdivision, but the Civic League and the neighborhood supported it. Um, and, yeah, so, okay. Okay. All right. Okay, we're ready. Ready, Mr. President. Okay. <clears throat> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves. Um, I'm going to say that as a real estate professional, I appreciate the new construction, especially um, um, in Ward 7. I really do. I appreciate the 
quality of new construction that, that you put um, in Campostella. Um, I represent a builder who's built out there as well. And um, I know that houses will sell there. Um, I know that quality houses will sell there and people will pay for the houses out there. And, um, you know, we go round and round and round with the planning commission sometimes because the planning commission and the community bump heads and it may be an expensive lesson that you have to um, learn, but I hope that it won't keep you from building in the Campostella community because they're not unreasonable, um, but they just want their community to be like everybody else's community and in everybody else's community, you gotta follow the steps. And so we have to be consistent with following the steps in all of the communities. And um, so for that reason, I vote no, but I really hope that that doesn't deter you from building because our neighborhoods are good neighborhoods and um, you can do well there. Ms. Johnson. Um, no, and I, I have clarity as far as, you know, you're having two lots and you're going to um, subdivide it and that's good. But I believe that the city of Norfolk has much more to offer um, with subdividing lots. Um, and although um, our specialty person, uh, Vice Mayor Frank, um, Vice Mayor Williams has Williams Grace has stated um, that the homes will still in Campostella. I think that maybe we need to to look back and, and revisit how we're planning for all of our communities in the city of Norfolk. So I vote no. Mr. Protegiro, no. Mr. Riddick, no. Mr. Smigel, just um, we're probably confusing the heck out of the planning um, staff because in the past we have voted in favor of these. I could see why the builders confuse, but there is one difference between this and the other ones is generally if the Civic League or the neighborhood um, votes in favor of it, then we generally support what the community wants. Um, things have changed with the Civic League regardless of what politics have happened there, but things have changed. And so to be consistent, I believe this council should vote against this because um, we, generally go with what the neighborhood wants and the neighborhood does not want this, so no. Dr. Wibley? No. Mr. Wynn? No. Mr. Frame? No. Thank you. Public hearing three, please. Public hearing three scheduled for this day. Thank you. On the application of the City Planning Commission for amendments to Chapter 3, Goal 5 within uh, Plan Norfolk 2030 to add and modify actions to support community-led redevelopment efforts in four emerging districts in the city, including the Chelsea Business District, Downtown Arts District, Park Place, and Greater Norview, five points by 6-0 vote planning commission. No one signed up Google. to address the council on this matter, so you can call the roll. I have an ordinance to amend the city's general plan so as to adopt goals and actions to support redevelopment in four emerging districts within the city, dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Public hearing four. Public hearing four scheduled for this day on the application of the City Planning Commission to modify Appendix B in the table of content, contents within Plan Norfolk to add the complete streets policy and to modify several actions in the transportation <coughs> chapter pertaining to complete streets. Planning Commission recommends approval 6-0. Mr. Reck is here to answer questions. Okay. I have an ordinance to amend the city's general Thank plan you. so as to adopt a complete street policy and to modify actions to support the policy dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Potagiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Um, I just would really like to recognize and thank Jack <coughs> for the hard work he's done on this and Ron Williams. We've been working on this in downtown uh, Norfolk Council. Um, Greg has been working with the city on this. this is a model that's replicated throughout our country. It's a good sound one, and, and uh, I can't thank you enough, Greg, for all your hard work. Aye. <coughs> Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Reck. Okay, public hearing four. Five. five. I'm sorry, five. Public hearing five scheduled for this day to hear comments on the conveyance to Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority of those certain parcels of property described as lots four, five, six, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 in block two as shown on that certain plat entitled plan, plan showing the property of Ocean View Cottage Company. 
And I have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority of those certain parcels of property uh, described as a portion of Lot 3 and Lots 4, 5, 6, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 and Block 2 as shown on the plat entitled Plat Showing the Property of Ocean View Cottage Company. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. All right. Mr. Smigel. Uh, really excited Webley. about this um, project right. and um, being able to bring 40 homes down to Ocean View on land that's been sitting vacant, actually being used as a storage uh, facility for all of the utility work. Um, sorry, Kristen. <laughs> you won't have storage. But uh, 40 new homes down there, uh, it will be just an outstanding project. We're, like I said, very excited about it. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Public hearing six, please. Public hearing six, scheduled for the state to hear comments on the conveyance to balance builders, Inc. of a certain parcel of property located at 1444 and 1446 West 37th Street. I have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to balance builders, Inc. of a certain parcel of property located at 1444 and 1446 West 37th Street for the total sum of $18,000 in accordance with the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R1. R1 is an ordinance to amend and reordain Chapter 5, Article 2 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 uh, so as to remove the mandatory minimum seating requirements and the prohibition of minors whenever alcoholic beverages are sold at public dance halls. Um, Richard Levin. This matter was uh, continued from our January 12th meeting. Good evening. I I'm Richard Levin, 610 Pembroke Avenue, Norfolk, Virginia. Good evening, Mayor and Council, Honorable Council. Uh, I'm just here because of, uh, of an applicant that's brought this to a head in Ghent, uh, someone who has been very much a part of the Ghent fabric. She's, been, she's in business for 10 years. It's the Mambo Room. And uh, she's been a major part of the GBA and so forth and part of our neighborhood. And it brings a, a whole nother element of group of people that learn to dance and so forth. It's, uh, it's a good thing. And um, obviously, I should say that I own the building that they're thinking of going to. I also own the building that they're leaving. But their business has been so successful that they needed to go ahead and expand. So um, I really hope that uh, y'all will give this serious consideration. Thank you. This thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tracy Holland. Good evening, Council Mayor. Um, my name is Tracy Holland. My address is thirteen forty four Norcova Court, Norfolk, Virginia two three five zero two. Um, I am one of the owners of the Mamba Room, and we are moving into a larger space <coughs> and taking on um, or offering more services to the community. We want to offer um, the space for to be like a banquet facility as well as a dance studio. So um, we want to be able to have weddings and um, celebrations and festivals and things like that in, as far as dance goes and as far as what the community wants to do. So um, there are two pieces to this dance hall code. First, I'll say that the dance hall code was developed the same year that I was born. <laughs> so it's an old code. And from what I understand, um, there are. Not so old. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you old. <laughs> um, you don't know old. But I understand. Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't know. <laughs> uh, there are pieces of it that are now. Um, that were put in place to control capacity and things of that nature, and there are other ways of controlling those things now that are working better. Um, so as a dance studio, I, am, I have a large dance floor, which causes me to, be, to have to have this dance hall permit. But um, in a dance studio, we definitely do not need one chair per person. Um, at, in the new place, our capacity will be 400 people, and if I put 400 chairs on my dance floor, there's nowhere to dance. So um, that piece of it kind of limits us, well, it limits us 
extremely. And the other piece would be um, about the children with the alcohol. We, um, we want to offer weddings, and we, ha we often have different things that go on at the studio, like events. We do um, a dance-a-thon every year that raises money um, for charities. We've, we've <coughs> done a lot of money CHKD over the past uh, couple of years. And um, there are children at this event, but I would still like to offer beer and wine at this specific event. So there are lots of places that you can go to have um, a beer and you can still have your child with you. So I just want to be one of those places. We are not a nightclub. We do have late hours where we have socials. Um, our people come and they learn to dance and there's not really a good place to go and to learn to dance unless they go to nightclubs and they don't really want to do that because then it becomes a place where people are drunk and it's kind of a meat market and we offer a different environment where people can come, feel safe. They come to dance, they don't come to hook up. <laughs> so um, we want to be able to offer the refreshments of beer and wine because people still like to have one or two, but they don't go overboard. My people do not, they're not, they're not heavy drinkers. So um, this affects us in a couple of ways. The dance hall permit restricts us from um, having these events uh, with children, like the charity event. I wouldn't be able to serve beer and, and wine at my charity event. Um, op, like other festivals, if you go to you know outdoor festivals in Ghent, there's plenty of, of um, things that the GBA does where there's a beer truck and there's still children and everything is fine. So I, I kind of want to be able to do that type of thing. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Tanya Fisk. Hello, Council. My name is Tanya Fisk, and I'm just moving here, so I have to look at my phone for the address. Um, <coughs> it's 2016 East Ocean View Avenue, um, number four, Norfolk, Virginia. So I've moved down from D.C., and I'm part of the expansion with Tracy for the Mamba Room, so I'm very new to the community and very excited about bringing different programs here. Part of those programs that uh, Tracy and I have talked about is making the building a community center. So we have dance classes. I have teams, and I myself have performed all over the world. And we want to bring that. We have a team getting ready to perform in um, LA in about two weeks. And part of that is our classes, but also part of that is the community that we build within each other. So <clears throat> dance offers a healing aspect to dance and to life. There's lots of people who have come in, whether they've been divorced, whether they've recently moved here from another area, they don't know anyone. And if they dance salsa, I can dance salsa in almost every country in the world, China, Japan, I was just in Egypt in October. Um, <clears throat> and that's part of what we mean by a dance community because it's a place where people can belong and they travel. I'm, I'm a military brat myself, so I danced. I grew up dancing in different places and locations. And one of the things that we want to be able to offer is weddings, is anniversary parties, is a Christmas party. And those different events do offer alcohol for children. Not for children, but with children present, sorry. <laughs> Restrike that, no. <laughs> um, but offer the ability for their, for their families and other people to have a drink. But the most important part about that is, is that it's not a nightclub. It's not what we do, it's not what we're about. I can't dance four or five hours in a night and drink. I'd be on the floor. So we wanna offer a safe place where families can come. Part of the ordinance that I have been brought to my attention is why can't we just get a banquet license? And I know that that was brought up at the last council meeting. Because we are dance hall, that, permit, that prevents us from getting a specific type of banquet license before allowing to have weddings and other events with alcohol present. So that's part of the ordinance and the code that we are asking for to be changed. And also the seating. If we have an event and we have, for example, the dance-a-thon, there is, I believe it's 11 hours of dancing all day but it's a charity event and half the money goes to, we've raised over 75,000 over the last few years for CHKD. There's children at that event and it's, you know, none of us are gonna be dancing and drinking for 11 hours, it's, that's insane. So I just want you to understand what the nature of the business is and so that you understand what our purpose is and it's not to be turned into a nightclub. Right. It really is to make it a community center, a banquet hall and then expanding our classes and programs into the community, into the school systems, as well as doing other charity events at, the, at this facility. Okay? Great, thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey George, could I ask you a question? This is obviously my career. <clears throat> yes, sir. How many, if you did it here, 
then it affects everybody from now on or what? Yes, sir. Um, this is the conversation that I, I didn't get into two weeks ago, um, thinking that, you know, we probably all had maybe you could think about it. The, in my opinion, the dance hall permit process is anachronistic, and it's a product of a previous century. You have at your disposal a much finer and a much better tool, and that is the entertainment establishment special exception. Every dance hall, by definition, will be an entertainment establishment. And you, by the special exception, you can look at each and every one of them individually and determine what are the important characteristics that, or conditions that need to be placed to ensure that that particular facility operates in the manner that you all deem appropriate for its location and for the, the, the business model that you are presented. So if, it, if they deal with a special exception, then they have to come back and identify hours and just like any other person who, or business who wanted to open a restaurant or a bar. Yes, sir. That is correct. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I have been into uh, restaurants where children are there. And so if they came back, as opposed to just giving a blanket dance hall, come as you are, then, you know, that's one thing. But if they came back with a special exception, identifying hours, then, uh, you know, to me it will be a little bit more palatable. But just to say, and then another thing too, anybody who's going to get a, have a wedding reception or something like that, that's the individual who goes down to the ABC board and gets the uh, banquet permit. It's not incumbent upon the operators of the dance hall to get the banquet permit. So if you were renting your place to somebody for, uh, for alcohol, I mean for a wedding, they would go down and, and on Providence Road and put their application in. Uh, <clears throat> I just, you know, I just think that there's no way to control uh, what's happening, you know, with, with, with uh, in regards to children uh, with a blanket situation like this. You're already going to let them go beyond um, capacity, not knowing what the fire code is. The fire department hadn't even said, you know, what capacity, you know, could be there. And so we could be setting, our, setting them up to... Uh, to have a big fire in there, over capacity, and somebody being hurt. You know, I understand that people want to go into business, and a lot of times when people go into business, the business is fragile, they try to compensate or close that gap with alcohol. And uh, that's one of my biggest issues with alcohol. And uh, in this particular instance, as far as the children are concerned, you know, who's to say, you know, what a, a big strapping young 17-year-old could come in there and, you know, look like he's 21 or 22, and end up drinking. Um, I think that if, if they want to come in, in my opinion, if they want to come in on the regular special exception with identifiable hours and all the other caveats, that's fine. But just to give them a blanket, you go and do what you want to do, I think, I think we'd be more moving in the wrong direction. Well, Mr. Riddick, in the case of the Mamba Room, um, this council has already granted them that special exception. You did that two weeks ago. Okay. Um, and as I said, my, my professional opinion is that the entire dance hall permit process is entirely anachronistic and that the city would be just as well served if it was entire, repealed in its entirety. Why didn't they bring alcohol two weeks ago then? If we did it they, two weeks They ago. did, and, and, you, and you approved it. Uh, and uh, on what? Well, what's the difference now? Um, the difference is, by definition, the facility, because it has a dance floor, larger than a certain size that is, pre is prescribed in, in code, it falls into the category of being a dance hall in addition to being an entertainment establishment. It's based on the size of the dance hall. Yeah, yeah. It's so based did on we the approve size of the dance hall, yes ma'am. Did it, did it come, and did it say children, did it spell out children uh, initially two weeks ago? We passed it by two weeks. No, you approved, you approved the special No, we approved stuff. it, we yeah. passed did, did it. Did it spe specifically say children? No, sir. No, okay. None of the special exceptions Because if I had seen there. children, I'd be in the same posture that I am now. Right. You know? And so if we pass it, let them live on what they got and, uh, and, and leave the children out of it. I thought the reason we passed this particular ordinance by was so that we could get better clarification on it 
in our informal session. And, um, you know, Council Ms. Meagle talked about issues that we bring up and having them addressed, but I thought that was the reason why we passed it by. So we passed it by on January the 12th, and we were back in council, and we didn't have any update or clarification on it. Mm -hmm. And now we're kind of, seems like we're right back here where we were before, not really having any clarification, any more clarification on it than when we passed it by before. There. Madam Vice Memo. I, I apologize, because I misunderstood. We did provide you with a written letter <laughs> I didn't know that you wanted a presentation in informal. I saw that, but we have a memo. I think it was appear. added on, but yeah. It still doesn't appear. I mean, to me, it just still doesn't appear that there's clarity on it, you know, even with the memo. So I don't know, but I, I think we're kind of. I, I'd hate to deny it and then have these people affected if it's really something as simple as a miscommunication that needs to be explained. And maybe, I mean, when do we come back again? But I, but I think the, I think the line in here said children are similarly permitted in restaurants where alcohol is served as well as events at Norfolk Seven venues facilities. So what would be the difference with this establishment with kids being allowed in when we serve alcohol at all of our city-sponsored events? You can bring your child to the wine fest if you wanted to, and they could have access to wine and people wouldn't know, even though there's police officers all around if they wanted to. I remember thinking that same thing last time we were talking about wedding receptions. I mean, children come to wedding receptions and there's alcohol that's being served there. And so, I mean, at some point, parents have to be parents and they have to be responsible. But why do they have to specifically spell this out? I mean, if, if we have all of these other uh, organizations and things. <laughs> what makes this organization it's have basic. to spell out children? I mean, you know, what, if, if they had just, why did they spell out children? The driver on this issue, uh, uh, council members, is the size of the facility. Mm -hmm. right? uh, the, the business operating as it is today that you already granted the special exception to in another ordinance mm -hmm. uh, wants to grow into a larger size facility. Our, our ordinance says that that size facility fits in a different classification, which is the dance hall. Dance hall. Okay. Uh, so it's merely the, the size and the, or the shape, you know, by, by what's defined in our code for their dance floor that's driving this change that we're suggesting. Because the business is already operating it as they, as they are pr proposing, but in a smaller facility now. And, and they're very few. Yeah, Nothing is changing except the size all. of the space. That's our understanding. The, the That's owners right. are not bringing to our attention minors in it. We had to do it because our code specifically mentions minors at establishments this size. Yeah, so and that's what the code says in here since the 1944. Tr the trigger is the size. And our, and our yeah. code is specific about minors. 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 In that section of the code. Right. But it was written in 1944. Right. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Must have been written later than that because she's not seventy some years old. No, no. The um, ordinance was <laughs> okay. Are we, what are we? We're ready to go. But this, we ready? this go ahead. facility, we never had a problem. I lived near there. I don't. I mean, that's a, it's a great asset to the community, and I, I think we need to go ahead and pay, pass this thing. Good work. Good. Call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. No. Mr. Smeagol? Uh, the mayor needs something to do in his retirement. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Wibley? The babysitter. Right here. Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. I could take up the money. You know, so funny. Do some combo. I got a real okay. picture of that, man. Okay. Okay. Or <laughs> two. R2 is an ordinance approving an encroachment agreement with EDR Enterprises, Inc., doing business as Pimento Island Bistro for property located at 1902 Collie Avenue. Is... This one we were going to continue. Okay, yes. the motion is to continue until the next is the meeting is the 9th. Right? February 9, yes, sir. Okay. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? And we'll get clarification from Mr. Ricks on this yes. prior to that vote. Yes. Thank you. Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3? An ordinance permitting Poseidon Properties LLC to encroach into the right of way 
of 9th View Street at 902 West Ocean View Avenue with a covered wooden patio, swing set, wooden walkway with bollards, staircase, water, found, water foundation with PVC piping, low voltage electrical lighting, and a concrete driveway. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4? An ordinance permitting the Lassa LLC to encroach into the right of way of 9th View Street at 900 West Ocean View Avenue with a driveway. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance permitting 207 Granby LLC to encroach into the right of way known as McCulloch's Lane along the western boundary line of lots 211 and 213 Granby Street with an exhaust duct, roof drains, electric cables, and boxes and doors. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance permitting Barry J. Knapp and Lori A. Giovanetti to encroach into the right of way at 9721 Dolphin Run with PVC irrigation piping. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. An ordinance accepting the gift of certain lots located in the Estabrook section of the city that were devised to the city by Albert H. Garrison, deceased. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. An ordinance accepting a grant in the sum of $352,000 from the Virginia Department of Transportation Transportation Alternatives Program Fund for the Elizabeth River Trail Phase 4C and 5 in appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of $352,000 for the Elizabeth River Trail Phase 4C and 5 when and if the grant funds are received. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. He's got more money than you do, Mr. Manager. The guy's got to... Keep it Aye. trail moving. Okay. <laughs> R9. A resolution in support of a rail enhancement fund application for the Commonwealth Railway Rail Expansion Project. Adopt the resolution. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or the motion is to continue R10 until the, the 9th, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Frame? Aye. You have an add-on? I have one additional item, numbered R11, and it is a resolution appointing two persons to one board and one authority for certain terms. Adopt the resolution. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Okay.